The hope of a life after death, in Egyptian culture, was certainly linked to the great love for life that characterized the Egyptians and, at the same time, to the deep religious sense that animated them. The Egyptians were in fact convinced that not only the different divinities wished to offer man a good life, but that precisely the divine origin of man was the reason for the possibility of eternal life. From these deep convictions was born the Egyptian reflection on death, rich in symbols, mysteries, hopes and even magic. According to the Egyptians, life after death was possible only on condition of preserving the body intact. It was for this reason that, over the centuries of their history, the Egyptians gave life to a complex ritual, that we know under the name of mummification. The purpose of mummification was to make the body of the deceased capable of living for eternity. And given how some mummies have come down to the present day, we must say that that purpose was achieved. The ritual was extremely complex and, therefore, very expensive. For this reason it was initially reserved for the pharaoh. With the passage of time, however, the hope of a life after death, spread to all the people, and real laboratories for mummification were established in the cities. It is clear that there could be different types of conservation. Depending on the availability of money, but everyone was looking for ways to ensure eternity for their bodies. To achieve this goal, even the poorest, who could not afford the costs of mummification, were buried in the desert, taking advantage of the extremely dry climate. At the time of death, the deceased was taken to these laboratories and, first of all, the internal organs were removed from his body, preserved separately in jars called canopies. The brain was also removed using long hooks inserted into the nasal cavities. The brain was not preserved, because even among the Egyptians it was considered a useless organ, as the seat of thoughts, decisions, and emotions was believed to be the heart. After these operations, the deceased was placed for a period of about 70 days in saltpeter, a substance that was intended to dehydrate the body, that is, to eliminate all the water present. At the end of the days, the body was gently cleansed and greased with special ointments, that softened and perfumed the skin making it more elastic. Subsequently, the body was scrupulously wrapped in linen bandages, between which amulets were inserted, that were intended to form like an armor, to protect the deceased during his journey into the realm of the dead. Finally, the bandages were sprinkled with bitumen in order to seal the bandage. The bitumen came from Jericho, a city in Palestine and the word that identified this substance was mummy ya, hence the term mummy that has come down to the present day. During the entire mummification process there were priests who prayed to the deities to protect the deceased. One of these priests wore a mask of Anubis the patron god of the dead. Once the funeral rites were concluded, the deceased began an adventurous journey to unknown regions in the afterlife. Leaving the tomb, the soul set out for the western desert like a pilgrim to whom water and food were offered. Then followed a series of tests that could only be overcome thanks to the formulas, and spells present in the Book of the Dead, placed in the tomb next to the deceased. Among these trials, we remember the encounter with demons, with crocodile heads, and snakes that in every way tried to hinder the path of the deceased, through bites or even trying to devour him. Having passed these tests, it was necessary to cross a river whose water was boiling, and so on. At the end of his adventurous journey into the kingdom of darkness, the deceased had to pass the last test, that of the judgment on his life by the god Osiris and his court. The deceased was led by the god Anubis or the god Horus, depending on the tradition, inside the Marti room, which means of justice and truth. Here, in front of Osiris seated on the throne, and the forty-two judges, began his declaration of innocence consisting of a series of forty-two statements, each of which was addressed to one of the forty-two judges. In these statements, the dead man upheld his honesty and justice. 
The truth of his words was verified by the scales placed in the center of the room. On the two plates of the scales were placed the heart of the deceased, symbol of his life, and a feather, symbol of the goddess Mart, the goddess of truth and justice. If the words of the deceased corresponded to truth, the heart that does not lie because it represented the real life of the deceased, remained in balance with the feather of justice. Otherwise the heart became heavy, because of the mortal sins committed during life, and its plate was low and compared to that of the feather. Let's listen to some of these declarations of innocence. Orbi of great strides came from Heliopolis. I wasn't bad. O long nose from Hermopolis, I did not steal. O shadow eater from Connet. I didn't kill anyone, anyone. O child from UAB. I did not remain deaf to the right words. O prophet from Uniset, I have not caused discord. O savior of humanity from Say. I did not blaspheme against God. O Inef who came from the city of the two mots. I didn't take away the baby's food. At the end of the Declaration of Innocence, if the weight of sins prevailed over justice, the monster Ram devoured the deceased and annihilated him definitively. If, on the other hand, the outcome was positive, and the balance remained balanced, that is, if the actions of man's life corresponded to justice, the gates of the paradise of Osiris opened, and the deceased could enter them. The idea that the Egyptians had of paradise, corresponded to an idealized image of life on earth. It was thought of as a place where people lived peacefully, where the sun was shining without being too hot, where a light wind continuously refreshed the air, where the fields always gave abundant fruits, where people loved, children were generated, and gamed in company. In order not to fatigue in the work, at the time of death, small statuettes were placed next to the deceased, the Ashibti, those who obey. At the moment of entry into paradise, the statuettes magically came alive, and carried out all the strenuous tasks in place of the deceased. The Egyptian idea of paradise thus corresponded to that of a place very similar to earth, but in which there was no death, pain and fatigue. To conclude, we can certainly say that the reflection that the Egyptians developed on the theme of death, even through imaginative images of which we do not always understand the meaning, was of fundamental importance also for subsequent cultures. The Egyptians understood that death is a moment of life, for which it is necessary to prepare daily. This for them did not mean living with the anguish of death, but living everything of daily life with intensity. Death was the moment of passage, in which what had been experienced during life, was carried into eternity.